All right, class. We have practiced solving equations. Um, I hope that you have learned how to do those over the few days that we've been working on those. We are now going to move into something called ratio and proportion. Uh, the first objectives that we're going to be doing is, is to write unit rates. So we're going to learn what a unit rate is and how to write them. We're also going to learn how to use unit analysis to convert rates. Okay, so those are the two things that you need to be able to know how to do um, during your get it time tomorrow. Or Monday, actually. This one will be Monday class time. So the vocabulary, first we have ratio. A ratio is a comparison of two numbers by division. Okay, by division, it's just a comparison of, of any two numbers, like ratio of boys to girls, maybe. You know, if there were six boys and three girls, the ratio would be six to three. That is a ratio. A rate is used to represent quantities measured in different units. An example for this one would be if you're driving down the highway, you oftentimes see speed limit signs. That is a rate. That is something uh, like 65 miles per hour. Okay, that's two different units, miles an hour. A unit rate is where we take any rate and make sure we have a denominator of one. So a speed limit is a unit rate because it's, for example, 60 miles per one hour. Okay, so that's a unit rate, and those are the ones we're going to be working with mainly. Unit analysis is a way that we use to convert from one unit to another. And I know you've been practicing this right here. You may not have known it was called unit analysis, but I know that you've been doing that in your physical science classes. All right, so using unit rates. First thing we're going to look at is um, we have grape ju grapefruit juice that costs $1.56 for 48 ounces. We need to find the unit rate. Right now, it's just a rate. It's just a general rate, $1.56 for every 48 ounces. In order to get a unit rate, all we do is divide our numbers. Okay, so let me get my calculator. So what we want to do is we want to divide the money per 48 ounces so we can know how much it costs for just one ounce. This is a skill that a lot of times can be used in a grocery store when you're trying to figure out what's a better bargain. So if you divide the two, what you'll see is we, you get this equals 0 0.0325. But since we're talking money, let's think about how we want to round that. When we're talking money, we probably want to go ahead and round to the nearest hundredths place because with money, that's how we do it. So if we want to round it to the nearest hundredths, it's 0 0.03. We need to look at the two. That tells us we leave it at three cents. So what we get for a unit rate is three cents per one ounce. And now that is a unit rate because the denominator is now one. So basically, you just divide when you need to find a unit rate. All right, the next thing we're going to look at is comparing two unit rates. Right here in this problem, we have two florists. We have Main Street florists and we have Flowers for You florists. Um, Main Street florist sells two dozen roses for $24.60. So we get for Main Street, we'll just set up two things here. We got Main Street and for $24.60 you get tw two dozen roses, which is 24 roses. So it's 2460 for every 24 roses. If we divide this out, we're going to be able to get our unit rate, okay? We're going to get our unit rate here. So we take 2460 divided by 24 roses. You get a 1.025. So we're going to round that to the nearest hundredth. 1.025 rounds to 1.03. So that's $1.03 for every one rose. All right? So that is our unit rate at Main Street Florist. For flowers for you, okay, it's $7.50 and you get six roses. So let's go ahead and divide that out and see what our unit rate is on that. Okay, you get a dollar twenty-five. So this one is a dollar twenty-five per one rose. Okay, so the better deal, uh, the the best unit rate is for Main Street florist because it's a dollar three per every rose. 
So that's how we can use unit rates to compare the better deal. And a lot of people do do that in the grocery store, including myself. Okay, so the next thing we want to look at is um, example three. So this is on the other side. We have that Lance Armstrong won the Tour de France, completing the 3,391 kilometer course in about 83.6 hours. Let me fix my lighting here a minute. This should work. Okay. Um, 83.6 hours. Find Lance's unit rate when he, when his average, which is his average speed. And then we have to write a rule to describe the distance he cycles D as a function of time T that he cycles. Cycling at his average speed, about how long would it take for Lance to cycle 185 kilometers? When we're talking about distance and rate, we have variables. They've already given us the variables V, I mean, I'm sorry, D for distance and T for time. There's a very popular formula for distance. We know that distance equals rate times time, okay? So that's our rule for distance. That's what a rule is. A rule is just an equation, okay? Um, and then we know his, we need to find his average speed is what we need to do. He completed 3,391 kilometers in 83.6 hours. We want to know how many kilometers per one hour did he do because that's going to be our average time. So what we're going to do is we're just going to divide 3391 3, 3, divided by 83.6 and that will give us how many kilometers he cycles in one mile. Okay, so what we get there is 40.56 kilometers per one hour. So that's how many kilometers he does in one hour. Okay, so then that's the rate. So see this R right here, it wanted the rate and it actually wants a unit rate. So rather than putting in this as our rate, we're going to put in a unit rate and we can just put in one number. So then what we do is distance equals 40.56 times time. All right. So that gives us a rule that we can use. We can plug in any time we want, and we should be able to know what his distance is. So if you look at part B on the question, it says cycling at his average speed, about how long would it take Lance to cycle 185 kilometers? Well, here, this is distance. They give us a distance. We want to know how long it will take. So our T is going to be our variable. We're going to plug in 185 for D. So we get 185 equals 40.56 times T. All right, so now it's just like solving an equation. We have the terms of variable on one side, the number by itself on the left. So we can divide both sides by 40.56. And we will get that time. So if we take 185, Divide it by 40.56. Our time gives us about 4.56, and we're talking hours. So approximately four and a half hours it will take him to cycle 185 kilometers. All right, the next problem is unit analysis. This is converting rates. This is something that you guys I know have been doing in physical science. We have a cheetah that ran 300 feet in 2.92 in seconds. So let's write down that rate. We have 300 feet for every 2.92 seconds. Now we need to keep in mind where we want to get to. It says what is the cheetah's average speed in miles per hour? So somewhere at the end we want to end up in miles per hour. Okay, We have to get to that. First we have to get rid of either the feet or the second. So we either start with time or, or uh, distance. We'll start with distance first. We'll get distance over to miles and then we'll worry about the hours. So feet, well here's how you set them up. You've got to set up a series of unit rates that you multiply, all right? Getting rid of each of the correct, correct things. So for feet, we want to get rid of feet and we want to end up in miles. So if we want feet uh, feet is on the numerator. We want feet to cancel, so we're going to put feet on the denominator here, and then these will cancel each other out. 
So we're going to go from feet right to miles, okay? There's 5,280 feet in a mile, all right? So I've set up that unit conversion. My feet will cancel and I'm left with miles, which is what I want in the end. So I'm done with distance. I need to do the same thing with time. Seconds is on the denominator down here. I want it up here in the numerator so it will cancel. Well, to get from seconds, we know we want to get to hours, but before we can get there, we have to go through minutes. So we have minutes. So we have 60 seconds in one minute. Then we got to do it again. We want minutes to cancel. Okay, see our seconds are going to cancel that. They're going to cancel. And then we want minutes to cancel. And we want hours in the end. And this is actually what we want. So it's 60 minutes in one hour. So here we have set up and we will get our answer. So what we need to do is just go through. We need to multiply 300 times 60 times 60, get our answer, then divide it by 2.92 times 5280. So I'm going to look at the top right now. We have 300 times 60 times 60. Okay, that gives us 1,080,000. Okay, and then on the bottom we have 5,280 times 2.92, so we get 15,417.6, and then we divide those two numbers. Okay. So we get approximately, when we divide these numbers, we get about 70 miles per hour. And that is how you convert rates using unit analysis. You just always have to constantly be thinking about what it is you need to cancel and what you need in the numerator, what you need in the denominator. All right, so if you have any questions, please come with them the next day of class, which I believe will be Monday and bring your notes in for your points. Thank you for watching.